Well done now. The last one. Yeah. Normally a busy hub in Manitoba's north, at 10, life in a Pasquiac Cree Nation shuts down. Oh, I'm sorry, we're closing now. For those living here, a strict curfew. For those that aren't, checkpoints to keep outsiders away. So if one case gets into our community, it's going to spread like rapid fire here. And, we want and says Chief Christian Sinclair, they'll go even further, threatening eviction and banishment for any residents who repeatedly ignore physical distancing rules. We see that as endangering the lives of others in our community. It was the community members' wishes that we take uh, stronger measures. Where are you coming from? Winnipeg. Winnipeg? Okay. Across the country, similar approaches, as dozens of Indigenous communities close themselves off, restricting access and movement. For many, it appears to be working. Nationally, there are still fewer than 100 confirmed cases on reserve, spread across a few provinces. The Indigenous epidemic many fear hasn't materialized. At least, not yet. There's no martial law. It's just common sense. Grand Chief Serge Simon is with the Kanasakatake Mohawks near Montreal. Each day, they've been turning away hundreds of cars. Not just people looking for cheap gas and tobacco, but looking to shop in less infected areas. So these people can inf inadvertently or indirectly infect our people. Community spread could start that way. So that's why we took the steps to uh, put checkpoints up. In many far-flung communities, it's easier to keep people out. Still, in 2009, H1N1 gripped Manitoba's north, exposing how poorly equipped many Indigenous communities are to handle an outbreak. Experience that's influencing hard decisions, says Sinclair. But if we lose a life, that's a life we can't ever get back in our communities. So, the checkpoints and curfews will remain. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg.